Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Botuelo from Curva.com and uh, today we're going to do another video on calendars. I don't know how many videos I've done, but uh, a lot. I should probably bundle them up in the playlist now that I think about it. So I'll, I'll do that. But anyhow, um, what we're going to do today, something that I haven't done in any of my previous videos, is to create an equivalent of Calendar Auto in Power Query. So we're going to use the M language to generate a calendar that pulls the data available on a sales table or your facts table. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so here we have the North Wind dataset that we always use. And this is a data set that you can download for free and use free in case you've never used it. I will post a link on the comment box. And in this data set, we have a set of tables. We have categories, customers, we have already a calendar. We have uh, order details, we have orders. This is where the dates for the orders are stored. And then we have a products table. What this calendar does is we have a set of parameters and this dictates the first date on the calendar and then we have made this calendar so it will update to today's date. So what we had in here which it was the 4th of July 1996 up to today's date. Now, there are some cases that you don't want that. There are some cases that you want the calendar to match the dates that you have on your facts table. This is how our facts table look like. Uh, this is the order table and here we have the order date, the required date and the ship date. We are basing our calculations on order date. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a calendar that will pick the first date on the order date column here and the last and that, that's the dates that we will get all the dates in between. So let me show you how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to edit queries and we're going to use our calendar, the calendar that we already have. There is a video on this, on how to create this calendar. So we'll post a link to it so you can check it out. So we will use this as a base. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to call this calendar auto. So we know that this is the calendar that will generate the dates that we want only. So this is what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the first date and the last date of the order table. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go into the advanced editor while we are on the calendar auto table. And we are going to do this a little bit of manual steps. The first thing is we're going to comment this. So if somebody else will read this, they know what we are doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to get max and min dates from order stable. Okay. So how do we do that? We are going to get max date is list max for our orders and the column is called order date as you saw it previously. So with this we will get our max date. Let's see how it looks like. So if we go up here, you will see here max date and it picks the first day on our calendar, on our order date uh, table. So now we have the max date, let's do the mean date. So the mean date, you can guess what it will be, is list min and then orders order date. 
And let's run that so we make sure that it's working correctly. So here we have max date, mean date, okay? So working perfectly. Now we are using this function, okay? List dates. And for that, we need to have the start date. We have it already, it's our mean date. But this works that it wants to know how many days we want the table to be. So it doesn't go mean day max date and that's the count itself. It asks us to do the count, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's not that difficult to do. And then it requires how many steps. So would you like to have every day or just every other day or yeah. So what we need to do is to calculate the difference between max date and mean date to be able to generate this count. So let's go back to advanced editor. And now we're going to calculate that. Uh, let's call it number of days. And I'm going to show you something. If we do max date minus mean date, look what happens. You see what it's doing? It's giving us a date back. So when you, which makes sense, if you are subtracting a date from a date, you should get a date. But we don't want a date, we just want a number. So we need to go back in there and fix this. And we're going to fix it with the function called number. There you go. And this will give us the number of days from the mean date to a max date. Okay. So now if we go to invoke days, here we have the start date is this one. Then we have the number of days in there. And then we have the duration. So what we need to do is replace this with our new functions, the ones that are variables, the ones that we created in there. So let's just do that. We go in there and our start date is our mean date, right? So the calendar should start with the mean date. The duration or the number of days is our number of days. So the rest we can remove. And then we want a continuous calendar. So every day between those dates. Okay. And now we just let Power Query do the magic, basically. So it calculated everything. So now you see, let's go up. Our minimum date was the 4th of July. I wonder if they did it on purpose. Probably. So 4th of July 96 is the first one. Let's see what is our last date is 5th of May 98, 6th of May 98. So what we're going to do here is add one. So we get the exact number of days. Let's go up 6th of May. So max day 6th of May. 6th of May. So now we have a calendar that is generated based on the dates that we have on our facts table. How cool is that? Great. So this is all for today. Um, if you like this video, make sure you let me know by liking it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below and subscribe and share. I publish Power BI videos every week. Have a great evening.